Hi friends, I am Jitendra. Today we will going to see how to design API using RAML part 2. In our previous version or in previous demo what we have seen, like we have designed this RAML. This is just a basic RAML where okay, we have defined resources, we have make use of the get, post, uh, various method. We have also seen the how to how we can use the nested resources like under book we have book 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 title book author like that okay and like how to define query parameter how to define URI parameter how to define request body how to define define response messages okay in this video we will going to see how to make reuse of the code we will use same example and we, we I will going to show you how you can make reuse of your code okay so first thing. Okay, I have defined the example in the RAML. It doesn't look so good. You can define if you have a big, big example, right? It is good to define into a RAML. I, I don't think so. Okay, it's better to you know define if you have a schema. You know, if you have some IDOC or XSD schema, it always big. Okay, it not it is not good practice to define those schema into the RAML. So better what you have to do, you have to define into some external file into other than RAML dot RAML file. And how you can include that file into uh, the RAML, I will going to show you. So first, let me create one folder, project, new folder, RAML, and I will say, sorry, I'm sorry, new folder, I will say examples, I will say underscore JSON, I will say OK. So it will create one folder for me. Under that folder, I will say right click new, new RAML 1.0. I will say example. Instead of dot RAML, what I will do, I will say books dot JSON. I will say OK. And I will go to API dot RAML. I will cut this example. OK. I will paste it here. I will save it. I will go to API dot RAML. Now I have removed my example from here, and it also you know what are the good one advantage. It also provides the code reusability of your example. If there are some, okay, let me show you. If you are have a lot of various method. If those method are using same example, you don't have to define again and again. You can make use of you can you know keep those example in some external file and using include keyword you can access that. I will show you. Exclamation include. Okay, ex space. So you have what is the folder example JSON? It will automatically display here. Then put slash then book dot JSON. That's done. So where we have defined that method slash book get example. So under slash book we have defined under get. So you can see like everything is present here. This example is present here. Now what I will do? I will do some minor changes in example. I will say seven thousand. Okay, save it. I will go to API dot RAML. I will again go to get method. So it will get it get reflected here. So what is other advantage? Okay, if there is some schema, the example get changed. If some new field is getting added, new added, okay, you don't have to go and touch your RAML. You just simply go to book the JSON and change your example and change your field. That is one one of the other example I have shown you. Like let me show you. I have added some new field. So comma enter. I say uh, address. I will say. I will say something x y z okay I will put comma I say address put something like that I will say save it okay I go to get so your example got changed okay I haven't touched my RAML I just touch book.json and everything has been changed a new field is also visible in the example okay this is one of the good advantage now I am going to show you something more. So we have a response like uh, under author post we have a, this response response 200 application data inserted and here we have a same response response 200 body application example message data added. So we are writing same thing again and again. Okay, this is not a good practice. We have to write we have to make code reusability. So what we have can do either you can define the threads in same file or outside this file. But I will define in this file. Okay, how can you, you when you define the traits outside the outside RAML, you can use the include keyword to use uh, to okay to use the traits. So, but here I will use the traits in line. I will say traits. I will put this. I will say enter. I will say tab. Now I have to define the name. What is the name of traits? It's just like a function name. So I will say response message. Put colon. I will say enter. 
here I can define what is the use of these threads. Okay, we can provide the description. I will just say it is used to send response. Just uh, it is used to send not I will define better way. It is used to define response. Description. It send response in JSON message. Fine. Now press enter. Now you can start defining your response. Response. I will say 200. I will say body. What is application JSON? I will say example. And here I can say I can say message. I will say data inserted. Fine. Yes. Okay. I put tab one here. Okay. Now what I will do? I will remove the response from here. Then how can you access? I have remove. Okay, just space. I can say each each is a keyword which is used to access your response. Okay, it automatically dis display response messages, but you have to use the square bracket. What is this response message? This response message is the name of your threads. This is the name of your threads. Okay, threads is it look like a function. How can you access the function? It is, in your uh, other language is code. You write a function, you define, you know, the code which is going to reusable at a multiple place. Same thing. So like using each keyword, you are accessing your response message. Now there's, there's one more place where we have used. Okay. So I will remove this. I will say is put, I will say response message. Fine. You have to give a space. Oh, I'm sorry. I have defined at the wrong place. Okay, I don't have to define. I have changed in the threads itself. No, I have to change in some function. Mm, yeah, this is it's here. It's the age space. Okay, I will put square bracket. Okay, better I will say response message. And at the start, I will put a square bracket. So you can see they're here. Okay, so it's in post. So you can see there is data inserted. Fine, let me close this. And I will check this post also. Data inserted. Now I will try to change data inserted successfully. Let me check if my document get changed or not. See data inserted successfully. So what is the other advantage? You don't have to go and change your response message in each and every method. You just simply change your response message in the threads. Okay, and it will get reflected in all the method where you have called your thread. Okay. So this is the advantage of using threads and include keywords. Okay. So thanks for watching video. If you like my video, just subscribe to it.